Unit rate. Unit rate. Unit rate. As with all things, we need to understand the vocabulary before we can do anything else. The term rate is generally a comparison between two separate values, two separate things. Comparison between two values. A rate. Some rates you may know. Miles per hour is a rate. Miles per gallon is a rate. We're comparing two things. Price per book. Price per candy bar. Yeah, all those. Those are rates. We can write, well, since I went to Amarillo this weekend, this was my rate. We drove about 360 miles in around five hours. And that's one way that we turned around and did it again on Sunday. So we drove 360 miles in five hours. This is a rate. That word in is kind of our... That's our breaking point. That's our fraction. That's our dots. We can write rates multiple ways. Um, we can write them like this. Uh, 360 miles and then two dots, five hours. We can also write it as a fraction. 360 miles in five hours. So we can write it as words. We can write it with the dots. More than that. What'd you say? More than that. The speed limit's about 75. We didn't go 75 the whole time because you go through little towns, but we'll get there. So. When you see the line, this is where we would say in. So we would say this 360 miles. Yeah, 360 miles in five hours, written out. And this is where you would say, uh, with that one, a lot of times you would hear it called two. So you have 360 miles to five hours, or 360 miles in five hours. So you would either say in or two as your comparison. Those are rates written as ratios. These are also ratios. It's also called a ratio. So if it says write it as a ratio, that's a ratio. A ratio is also a comparison between two values. Now, like I said a second ago, when we start dealing with miles per hour, that's what we call a unit rate, which is what we are dealing with today. A unit rate is determining how much one is. How much one thing is. You'll have a one as the denominator. One as a denominator. Figuring out how much one is. So as with miles per hour, we're figuring out how many miles you can travel in one hour. That's a unit rate. 
when you go to the grocery store and you see those tags where the price is in that top left corner, it's usually like an orange. It'll say like price per unit. Sometimes it depends on what the unit is. So like candy bars, like if you buy, well, not candy bars, granola bars, like in the box, you'll have like a five pack next to a 10 pack. And when you want to figure out like which one is cheaper per bar, if you look in that little orange box, it'll tell you it's this much per bar or it's this much per bar. Or when you buy like, I'm trying to think. Uh, when you buy like meat, like hamburger meat or chicken, and it's like, okay, this package has six pounds of chicken. It's this much per pound on the little price tag. Next time you go to the grocery store, it's on there. Um, I don't know what else. Sometimes you get things for cheaper if you buy more. Sometimes it's more expensive to buy more. So you always watch, like if I buy a whole lot of butter, is it cheaper than buying like lots of little sticks of butter? Sometimes. Sometimes it's not. So being a frugal shopper. So how do we figure out how much one thing is? Well, it's pretty simple. First thing you're going to do is figure out what two things you're comparing. What two things are you comparing? My nose itches. What two things are you comparing? So with my example, driving to Amarillo, what two things am I comparing? Yes. Miles to hours. Miles to hours. So I am comparing miles and hours. Now, if I'm comparing miles and hours, it's important that my values are in miles and hours. So if I told you that I, I mean, if I actually pulled up our GPS, we probably went 360, that's 365, I think, but 360 miles, it wasn't five hours exactly. I think it ended up being like five hours and 36 minutes. But I can't work with five hours and 36 minutes. It has to be hours if I'm comparing miles and hours. Does that make sense? I can't deal with minutes. Got to change those minutes to hours. If they give it to you in ounces and it's asking for pounds, you have to do a little conversion there. Okay. So I'm comparing miles and hours. Next, I need to find a new color. Write it as a ratio. Write as ratio if I'm comparing miles to hours I am going to write it as miles to hours use labels label 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 I'm walking around and looking at your work. I'm going to ask you, what is that 360 watts? Because if we get them flip-flopped, you're going to get the wrong answer. Lastly, we divide. If I have this and I want to figure out how much is one hour, what do I do? Yes. 360 divided by five. I'm going to do it over here. 360 goes in the box because the first thing goes inside the box divided by hours. You can also think miles per hour. So that's 7. That'd be 35. Subtract 1. Bring down the 0. That would be a 2. That comes out to 10. The end. So we averaged about 72 miles an hour, which is good because the speed limit is 75 for most of the trip. If it was more than 75, I would have some explaining to do. I drive slow. So this means 72 miles per hour. That means I drove 72 miles in one hour. 
So each hour, 72, 72, 72, 72. I have to remind myself that sometimes when I'm going to work in the morning and people are going slow, if I want to drive 70 miles per hour and the person in front of me is driving 68 miles per hour, it takes me about 20 minutes to get that, uh, 25 minutes to get to work. In the long run, if I'm a jerk and I zoom around that guy because he's going just a little bit too slow, in an hour's time, him driving 68 miles an hour and me driving 70 miles an hour, we will only be two miles apart, which in a car is like two minutes. So I would get there two minutes faster than he would. I, and whatever. So if you think about it in shorter distances, like yes, I can zoom around him and be kind of rude about it, but I have to remind myself, my mathematical mind, it's not going to make that much of a difference. It's going to be like seconds for a shorter distance. It's seconds. And chances are we're going to hit the light at the same time, and then they're going to be behind me, at the one car. So math and driving. Now, there's another way to think about it. If you take your ratio, 360, and put it over 5, what can I do to the 5 to make it a 1? Divide by 5. So I can also simplify my fraction, and it comes out the same. And this is still miles. When we see that line, we think per. That line means per. And this is ours. One more way to look at it. No more math. We're done with the math part. This is going to be a picture. My last class liked the idea of pictures. I'm all for pictures. But it's important that your pictures make sense. So I'm going to show you how to make it make sense. If I have, this is what we call a strip diagram strip diagram. I am comparing miles to hours. Miles to hours. How many miles did I go total? 360. So this end of the strip diagram will represent 360 miles. How many hours did that take me? Five hours. So this end is going to be zeros. Zero miles and zero hours. Zero miles and zero hours. I My goal is to figure out one hour. So there's two, three, four. Whew, those are not spaced out well. So that's one, two, three, four, five hours. If you wanted to think about it this way, this works. You're going to be dealing with some fractions. Just make sure we're reasoning correctly. Second period wanted to kind of think in their head, which I'm all for. But know that if you're thinking in your head and you're not showing anything on the paper, I don't know what you're thinking. So try and write something down. So if you're getting it wrong, I can explain why. So all I do here is I divide it by five. Um, there's really not an easier way to do that, so that's 72. So each of these is 72, 72, 72, 72, 72. Okay, we'll call that.